Now that you have your audio loaded into ExpressScribe, it's time to learn how to use this program. We'll go through the basic controls, hotkeys, and settings. One of the first things you'll notice when you open ExpressScribe are the large buttons on the bottom for Stop, Play, Rewind to the Beginning, Rewind a Short Section, Forward a Short Section, and Forward to the End. To the bottom right of the control buttons, is a slider that shows you how far you are into the audio file. You can also see the exact time you are at to the left of the slider. This green bar shows you the volume within ExpressScribe. If a file is too loud or too soft, you can adjust the volume to your computer inside of ExpressScribe. This bar down here shows you the audio speed. You can speed it up or slow it down depending on how fast you want to hear the audio. You can also control it with hotkeys. This middle section shows you the current audio files you have loaded. I have mine set up to show the dictation name, the date, the duration or length of the file, and then any notes. If you right-click on any of these names, it shows you other options that you can check to show up on the screen, such as priority or deadline. Let's go over this icon list. The blue I button shows you file information. There's a Save button and a Rename button. When you have finished a file, you can delete it or mark it as done, which is a check mark button up top. If you mark it as done, it is still saved within ExpressScribe. You can recover it by hitting the Recover button. Select the file you want to recover and hit Recover. If you delete a file, then it's deleted within ExpressScribe. But if you saved it elsewhere in your computer, then you can reload it into ExpressScribe if needed. On this row, there's also advanced features like forwarding a dictation, attaching a file to a dictation, and loading a document template directly from Word. Later, I'll show you how to choose which file to set as default, if you want to use that feature. Since I have many templates that differ for single speaker, multiple speaker, and for different contracts, I usually don't use this feature and instead load my templates through Word. You can access many of these features from right-clicking on a file name. Let's move to the top row of icons. In this row, there's a Sync button, which lets you automatically download files from an FTP server you've set up. You can also load files that you've downloaded or saved. If I'm loading within ExpressScribe, this is the button I use. But I usually prefer to load it from the file itself and right-click to open with ExpressScribe. I never load and delete since I want more control over exactly when I delete a file. The dock option is for when you're loading files directly from a recorder or external drive connected to your computer. Dispatch lets you email files when you're done with them. Again, this is a feature I rarely use. There's the Done button again. Scribe Mini is one of my favorite features. When you click on it, it'll turn the screen smaller. You then just click the button in the bottom right corner to return it to its original size. In the settings, you can make it so that Express Scribe stays open on top of other applications. That way, you don't have to continually maximize and minimize it as you're working on files, but you can still see how far you are in a file. You can also resize the screen using the bottom arrows and resize the notes areas if you're adding notes. We'll quickly go into the file menu. I don't use this often because almost all of the commands can be accessed by right-clicking on the audio file. Here you can see that you can load the audio file mark the file as done, delete the audio, and more. In this view, you can see the list of current commands for controlling your audio. It's much easier to use hotkeys or a foot pedal to control the audio instead of choosing them from the menu. A hotkey is a button that you push from the keyboard to control the audio or other parts of ExpressScribe without using your mouse. This helps keep your hands on the keyboard and type faster. You can see the basic commands under system-wide hotkeys. I have added a couple of commands that aren't in the default view. I created a printable so that you can have easy reference to the hotkeys. 
We'll go over some of the basic hotkeys in this lesson, but we'll dive into them more in other lessons. The most basic commands are start and stop. If I push F5 on my keyboard, it starts playing the audio. When I push F6, it stops. There are two types of hotkeys in ExpressScribe. The first is known as system-wide hotkeys. These are key combinations that will control part of ExpressScribe, even if you're working in another document, such as Word. These hotkeys override any other shortcut that you have for other programs. For example, if you're working with Word on your PC, and ExpressScribe is closed, when you press F7, that brings up the Spelling tab. But if ExpressScribe is opened and you push F7, even within Word, then that rewinds the audio and doesn't open up the Spelling tab. We'll customize and add more hotkeys in another lesson. The second type of hotkey is shortcuts within ExpressScribe that only work when the ExpressScribe window is open, such as setting bookmarks, controlling the Scribe mini view, and more. We'll go over these more in other lessons. In the View window, the first option is to choose how video is shown, which is a feature only available in the ExpressScribe Pro version. I have mine set to when available. So if a file is a movie file, it will show it. But if it's an audio file, like an MP3, then there's no image shown. The Show Notes option lets you type in notes for each audio file. This is helpful if you're tracking speakers, and you can write out some of the attributes of the speakers you hear. I also use it for other small notes, such as how often I need to timestamp a file or other special requests for the file. You can also show something called a channels window. This is something I usually don't use. It only shows up if you have a file recorded in stereo. Stereo files contain more than one channel, and the channel levels let you adjust the levels of each channel. So this is an option to play around with if perhaps one speaker is louder than another. One option that I always make sure is checked is the Float Above Other Windows option. This makes it so that ExpressScribe still shows up even if you're working in another program. You can also set up the Mini ExpressScribe view from this window. I'm going to skip over the Bookmark section right now, as well as the Preferences menu which was called Options in previous versions. We'll get into those in later lessons. The option in the Tools menu is a Word Line Counter. This only works if you copy and paste your document from Word into ExpressScribe. It can be helpful if you are doing legal transcription or getting paid per line or word. Most paid text expander programs also do this within the Word file you're using, and so this is a feature that I don't normally use. The Tools menu also has a link to practice typing with the free, basic version of NGH Software's Keyblaze Typing Program. The Window menu lets you maximize and minimize your screen. And then the Help menu simply shows you the help contents and how to contact ExpressScribe. So here is a basic overview of ExpressScribe. In the next lesson, we'll go over how to customize it even further using the Preferences menu.